All right, there we go. We are live. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my fellow comic book collectors. My name is Chris, and this, of course, is We Love Comics, and I have, I have another pre-order comic that I would like to mention to people and see if it's something you're interested in. Obviously, one of the things I always say when it comes to speculation comics is there are always risks involved. I will assume that 99.9% .9 of the viewers are adults and can think for themselves. So when I show a book, it doesn't mean you go out and just buy it. You want to research. You want to trust your instincts. You want to see if you can find deals, which, by the way, many people yesterday, instead of just buying the first comic they saw, they actually went to their comic book stores and found the book in the dollar bin. So there are always going to be people that say, oh, the book is too expensive or you cannot make money. Those are the people who are not willing to do what it takes to make deals happen by making the effort. And that's one of the things I want to instill in my viewers is just because a book is expensive does not mean you cannot find a deal. I show repeatedly time and time again that I pay way under what most people pay because I put in the effort and I'm seeing some people starting to do that. So congratulations to those. But like I always say, there are risks involved. Don't just buy a book just because somebody mentioned it. Trust your instincts, do your own research, try and find deals, and if you feel the comic is not worth speculating on, and it doesn't bring you any joy, then pass on it. There are some times where you just have to say, all right, I wanted this book, but I'm not willing to pay the price that's going on. I'm not willing to put in the effort to try and find a deal, so I'll just pass it. So keep that in mind, because you're always responsible for what you do, no matter who suggested it, who brought it up, and how many other people are doing it. So I want to make that perfectly clear before I mention this. So, so far, five people like what I'm saying, and thank you to those five people. Always appreciate those who care enough to hit that like button. So as I'm seeing people starting to come in, I just want to remind people that I put in the live, it's in, also in the description, and it will be pinned to the comments section, that if you join the cashback program, if you haven't done it before, um, all you have to do is click on the link I provide, sign up, it's free to do, just check for restrictions in your area. If you spend $25 or more within, within the first 90 days, you'll get a $10 cashback bonus. I get a one-time referral fee if you do that, so it helps me out considering that I've been out of work for four months. Wait until the end for today's surprise subscriber shout-out, and now the moment that most of you are looking for is here. This is the book that I would recommend you at least check out. I'm not guaranteeing anything. You may like it for the cover. Some people collect for the cover. Yada, yada, yada. The book I'm talking about, it's a pre-order. Now, I tried to look on Southside Comics. They do not have this book available. They're sold out, so check other stores, or you could check on eBay. You can get this pretty cheap if you, if you do some shopping. Um, this is Thor 4. This is the third print. It's the Klein variant. So... Thor 4, we all know, is the cameo appearance and first appearance of Black Winter, who is very popular right now. Now, whether he stays that way or not will depend on what they do with him. So just because a character's hot now does not mean it will they will stay hot forever. So please keep that in mind. But when I saw this cover art, I had to have it because I think that is amazing. Now, is that foreshadowing? I cannot guarantee that. I don't know. That would be quite interesting if that image is actually a foreshadowing of things to come. And even if that is true, well, nothing's ever guaranteed in comics. We all know that. Like, um, somebody pointed out about um, one of the books that I suggested saying, well, that's not even true anymore because that character changed. And my response was, well, remember back in the 90s when Magneto pulled out the Andamentium medal from Wolverine? Well, he has it now, so keep that in mind. Anything can change, and anything that was killed off or taken away can return. So remember that if you are newer to comics. Unless you're Uncle Ben, pretty much nobody stays dead. And if... Wolverine could have the metal extracted from his body completely and then somehow find a way to get it back, anything can change. So keep that in mind. So this is Thor 4. It's the third printing. A lot of the current books that are third prints tend to do rather well. So is this the exception to the rule? Too early to tell. 
but this is a pre-sale that does not go out until September 9th. I would recommend trying to get it from a local comic store because what I've been seeing from a lot of people from eBay is if a book becomes valuable and rises in price before it even comes out, a lot of eBay sellers are being unprofessional and canceling orders and making up excuses. So if you go to a comic book store, that might reduce it, although I have had experiences from people saying that even comic book stores canceled orders. So you may want to go to somebody that you trust and you've worked with before. But keep in mind, again, that's the risk you take sometimes. Sometimes it's a roll of the dice. You just have to trust you're not going to be the one that gets snake eyes. Unless you're looking for a G.I. Joe comic. So there you go. I did a dice gambling reference and a G.I. Joe co reference all in the same shot. So that is the book. I have more that I'm going to show. Um, always keep in mind, just because I like something and I'm getting it does not mean you have to get it just because, oh, I like Chris or I listen to Chris's advice. I'm going to get it. Make sure you do your own research. Trust your own instincts. I love that cover. I also know the significance of, of Thor 4, and I've also seen recently about alternate printings. Now again, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I'm of the generation that hated second prints. Because back in the 90s, no one wanted a second print. I mean, I'll give you a prime example. There will never be a day that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 1 first print will ever be outclassed financially by the second or third or fourth print. It will never happen. So even though there is a Teenage Mutant number one, second print, third print, I think it goes up to five or six prints, they will never be anywhere close to the same value as the first print. That's old school mentality. It's not going to change. But one of the things I tell some of my older viewers is, you know, times change. And if you're a speculator, if you do not or you are not willing to change with the times, you're going to fall way behind and miss opportunity after opportunity. So in the past couple of months, I've learned to appreciate other printings of books and seeing the potential value of them because today is different than the 80s and 90s and any other time. And if you're not willing to change with the times, you are going to fall behind and you're going to miss out on a lot of financial opportunities if you're doing it for that. Now, obviously, there are plenty of people that buy books just because they love to read them. Well, then it doesn't really matter the price, and if it's too expensive... Instead of getting mad that everybody's buying it and raising the price, because that's just reality, supply and demand is going to increase the price of anything. I mean, please tell me where you can f buy a brand new car out of a dealership for $800. You can't. So times change. People don't know the concept of the difference between currency and money. That's why they don't understand the value of things. It's not that things get a bit more expensive. It's the currency that's used becomes devaluated. So people don't really understand these things. And that is very relevant to when you are investing in anything. It doesn't have to be comic books. But, I mean, there are people who collect just to grade books and put them on their wall. There are some people that just love the art. There are some people that just want to fit in the crowd and say, look, I have what everybody else has. It's filling in a void that never gets filled because once you have something that you really wanted based on what everybody else wanted and you joined in, once you have it, now you have to find the next thing. So it's a never-ending void that you're filling. So whatever reasons you have to collect comics, just enjoy it. Even if everybody else is against you or disagrees with you. Because I, I read the comments and I see comments from time to time when I make these suggestions. You know, like, oh, well, this isn't going to happen or this is too expensive or you're not going to make a lot of profit. Well, if I make a $50 profit, I'm happy. I mean... Like one and done comics, like the one I mentioned yesterday, and I said, and there were people that made it very clear they did not actually watch the video and they just made assumptions, that it's all about timing. Because, like for example, Thor 390. If you bought that book for $10 and sat on it for decades, you'd think, oh, I wasted my $10. Well, when the movie came out and the rumors were that Captain America was lifting up Thor's hammer, that book sold for up to $160. I know because one of my subscribers said they had the opportunity to sell it for $160 and asked, should I do it? And I said, hell to the yeah, because you'll never see that again. So there are always opportunities out there. 
The only time you miss an opportunity is when you don't trust yourself and you listen to others that have nothing but negative things to say. There is a reason why there are people that are negative, because maybe they're testing to see if you really believe in the things you say you believe in. Because if you believe in them, you'll stand, you'll stand tall in your conviction. You won't hide. And that's why many people that tend to be what I call the negative Nancys, they are always hiding behind their computer because they don't believe in their convictions enough to stand tall about them and they have to hide. So don't let anybody else discourage you and talk you out of something that may bring you joy, even if they don't understand it, even if they think you're crazy. And that's the thing about when I make purchases, Yes, and there are times I will overspend. It happens. You let emotions run wild and you think, oh, I got to get that book now, and you overpay. But if you don't learn from that lesson, you keep doing it. So you'll see from time to time, there are books that I'll lose money on. But then again, like I said, if you don't sell it, you don't lose or gain anything. And you see with comics, there can be comics that have been in the dollar bin for decades that now all of a sudden have value. It only takes a TV show, a cameo appearance in a movie, or sometimes even just a rumor to bring up all of a sudden a dollar book into a twenty thirty dollar gain now I can understand where some people will say well it's a dollar book you're selling it for twenty you're not you're not gonna buy a mansion with that I understand that but if for example like the book I mentioned yesterday if you haven't seen it watch the video that's going to be a one-and-done comic which means it's only gonna have that one opportunity so if you can make twenty dollars or $15 or $10 on a $1 comic and you'll never be able to get that opportunity again and it will go back to the dollar bin that nobody cared about that's the time to, to take advantage of that opportunity and people say oh well on eBay you have all these fees and this that and the other thing and then at the time it's not worth it well can't you do trades can't you go to somebody that you know in person and sell it to them for cash some people just are so narrow-minded, they do not see that there are infinite ways you can do things based on your brain's ability to come up with an idea. It's crazy when somebody says, this is how it is, there's no other way. That, to me, is a person that is so close-minded, they cannot see more than what's right in front of their face. A chess player knows how to play the game. A really good chess player will know one or two moves ahead of time. A professional champion chess player not only knows his next five moves, but can anticipate your next five moves and counteract them before you've even done them. So you have to determine what level you want to be at when it comes to any kind of investment or anything in your life. Are you a person that's just going to follow what everybody else says? Well, you better hope you're hitching to the right, the right wagon, because even if it's a person you like, they can make mistakes. They can get things wrong. Things can change. There are no guarantees. And if you blame a person for your own decisions, well, then you're not being a responsible and a wise investor. Because, like I say, I know there are tons and tons of comic book people who buy comics just to read them. And that's great. And they're not going to come here. And they're not going to like what I'm saying because it goes against what they think. And that's fine. But for them to not understand that to make a lot of their books and a lot of their movies and a lot of their TV shows relevant, they need the people like us who are putting the financial ability into the process, getting the excitement to continue, so it gives them justification to continue to make movies and TV shows and comic books and keep them alive. We are all necessary. If the speculators just walked away... It will be like the comic book crash of the 80s and, I'm sorry, of the 90s. Comics were not really relevant between roughly around 1996 to about 2005, maybe 2010. So all that time, all of the people, most of the people walked away, the speculators. And look what it did to the industry. Between the mid-90s through the early 2000s, how many comic book movies and TV shows were there? And how good were they? Because remember, when they first started... They were afraid to even put people in costume. I mean, just look at the first X-Men movie. They were so afraid to put them in costume. Wolverine, throughout his movie career, never once had his costume. Because they were afraid to do it. They got better at it as they went along. But 
each part is necessary. We need the readers. We need the people who have the passion of the story. We need the people who appreciate the artwork just because it's beautiful to look at or hang up on a wall. And maybe that's the only reason why you bought a comic book. We need the people that are going to spend money to keep the industry continuously staying in business, especially in this time when small businesses are falling and will disappear forever. But, of course, we'll have the Walmarts, the Amazons, and the McDonald's of the world. Notice none of those ever got shut down. It just destroyed the small, middle-class economy. But, again, people don't understand those kind of concepts. So, again, as usual, I go deep into it. This literally could have been a 35-second video saying, here's a comic, go buy it. But I want the people that view my channel to get more out of it than just the comic. I want to give my reasons why. I also want to explain the risks. I want to also talk about the deeper levels of what most people come here for, and that is to invest the best way possible. And if anybody tells you that something is too expensive and you believe them, that means you'll make no effort. Like I said, when the movie Black Panther came out, a week before the first Black Panther movie came out, I was able to acquire a Black, uh, a Fantastic Four number 52, the first appearance of Black Panther, for under $100. And that was a week before the movie came out, at its peak of its popularity. That, it graded, I think, because I have a couple of copies, I think that graded about a 5.0, which was about a $600 book. I paid under 100 Deals are out there if you're willing to search for them. If you automatically say you cannot, you will not. And unfortunately, 99% of the world cannot understand that. And that's why they never really get what they want. So, that is my sermon. If you like it, you will be kind enough to hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you will kindly hit the thumbs down. But this is what I will say to anybody that hits the thumb down button. Will you have the conviction to leave an intellectual comment to, en to educate me as to why you felt this, this video deserved the negative rating you're giving it? Let's see who has the conviction. And I'm not talking about a person who has a profile with nothing about them. I'm talking about the ones that I know make videos. Why are you so afraid to put yourself out there? Are you afraid that you will be the minority and not the majority? True strength is being able to stand on your own, even when the whole world is against you. Because if you look at any change in the history of our planet, it's not the masses that do the change. It's usually one person or one group of people that change the concept of what everybody else believed to be true. So, one of the things that I am very proud of, even when I'm wrong, is I stand alone in my conviction because I believe in what I say and I put it out there, whether people like it or not, whether they understand it or not, that is standing in your conviction and being proud of it, even if at the risk of being wrong. So yes, I will mention comics that may never succeed, but I, I don't make a video saying, oh, I want to secretly sell all of these books right now, so I'm going to make a video, hype it up, go directly on eBay, sell all the comics and make a fortune. I don't do that because that's that's not being ethical, that's not full of integrity. Yes, I sell books from time to time, but if you can show me one video where I promoted a book and then the next day I sold that very book on one of my videos where I sell comics, please point it out. And I've seen people and I've heard rumors, and I won't mention anybody, but I've heard rumors from other people saying that there were people who would mention a book and say there was a rumor about a book to build the value up of it. And I've actually had people that will say, can you talk about this book? And I know what their intention is. They have the book, they probably spent too much on it, they saw the price go down, so they know if I or somebody else makes a video about it, it will gain interest and then all of a sudden the price will go up and that will give them an opportunity to sell it. If I do not believe in the book, I'm not going to talk about it. I don't just talk about a book just because I want to make a profit off of it. That is sleazy, to put it nicely. And that's why one of the deals I made with Southside Comics, and they haven't had a problem with this at all, and that's why I love working with them, is I, I will never sign a contract 
because I don't ever want to be obligated for some company to say, all right, we're paying you, you promote what we tell you. No, because if I don't believe in it, I'm not going to promote it. So I can believe in something and it fail, or not work out the way I thought it could have, but I will never intentionally try and mislead you by putting out information for my own personal gain to screw all of you over. And I think most of you pretty much understand that. Now, there'll always be people out there that have nothing better to do and will do a assumption about me or anyone else. And all I have to say to those people is, present your evidence. Because if the court system were based on somebody making an accusation, probably the whole world would be in prison right now. So, if you do not appreciate my videos, and that's fine. I don't take it personally if, you, if I'm not your cup of tea. My question would be, one, why are you here with something you don't like? And two, if you don't like it, why are you so afraid to show who you are, let the world know that you stand in your conviction, and give us an explanation as to why you disapprove? A monkey can hit a thumbs down button. Do you want to be like that? And that's like I said. That's why most here, they get it. A few bad apples always try and spoil the tree. Now that I know that it's my tree and I can grow it any way I want and bear whatever fruit I want, whether they like it or not, is not relevant to me being the tree I deserve to be. And that's why I do my videos the way I do. So a video that would have taken somebody else 30 seconds to do is now a 22 minute video and I guarantee you there will be people that watch the full 22 minutes my power viewers and there will be some people that actually appreciated the advice I gave and those are the people I make this video for I don't need 50,000 people watching my channel just to make money and not care about anything else but themselves that's why the world is the way it is right now so I will show books that I like. I will share that with people knowing that you may like it, you may not like it. But this is the best advice I can ever give you about anything in the world. If you base your decisions on what everybody else does and what everybody else says, you are not standing your own ground, you are not living in your conviction, you are living in fear because you're afraid to be yourself because the tribe will not accept you. True strength is a person that stands out. If you look at any leader throughout history, they seem odd, they seem different, they seem solitary, but yet they're the ones brave enough to stand in their conviction and change the world. Do you think somebody today would be like Einstein, looking the way he did? People would be too afraid of being ridiculed and insulted. I get insulted, I'm sure you've been insulted. Why take it to heart? If you're walking down the street and somebody said to you that you don't know, I don't like you, do you really care? And I had to learn that lesson when I shut down my first channel. We all have to grow. So there's your sermon again, and now it's a 23-minute video. So before I continue, we'll ramble on. Let me once again tell you to please hit the like button if you appreciate this. 48 people hit the like button, so thank you to each and every one of you. That means a lot to me that even though I'm making a drawn-out long video about one comic that I'm speculating on, you're all still here listening and appreciating my advice. That means the world to me, and I appreciate you for that. Let's do today's surprise subscriber shout-out. And uh, don't forget, check on that cashback program, sign up. It, click the link because it helps me if you do, it, only if you pay for something. If you click on the link and sign up and never use it, um, it's it's basically wasted for both of us because you don't, you don't get the cashback benefits, and I don't get anything for it. So I get a one-time fee if you sign up and spend the $25 within the first 10 days. So it's a way to help my channel and help yourself, and it doesn't cost you anything than other what you would have probably bought anyway. So click on that link if you would be so kind. So today's surprise subscriber shout-out is going to go to... Let's scroll back, see if there's somebody that's still here. We're going to go with James Buck. James Buck, you are today's surprise subscriber shout out. If you are so kind and you are one of my power viewers or ultra power viewers and watched until the end, please in the comment section acknowledge our surprise subscriber shout out by leaving a comment 
Let us know what you think about this book. Let me know if you're going to buy it or not. If you're not, explain why. All I ask is you don't have to agree, just disagree civilly. Let's educate each other so we can learn. Otherwise, we're just fighting back and forth, and then we're no better or no different than half the world right now. Thanks for listening. I appreciate you caring. Have a great day. I will see you next video. And do not forget, it is not you. It is not I. It is we love comics.